Hey guys, Alton here. First off, I want to say thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. And for today's video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at one of my selected lectures from my best selling 10 and a half hour introduction to information security management course. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about access control. So I do want to preface this before we get into the details is that this is going to be a fairly lengthy lecture because we have a lot to cover. So just prepare, be prepared for that before you watch this entire video. So access controls, what are they? Well, it's just as name implies, they are controls we put in place to control access to our business, our organization, and our IT infrastructure and assets. So we want to protect ourselves against a wide variety of threats. And so what are those threats? Well, we want to prevent unauthorized access to our data, our assets, our information. We want to prevent unapproved modification of our data. And we want to prevent a lack of data confidentiality. And you'll notice that this relates back to the CIA triad. So remember the CIA triad, triad is really our cornerstone of cybersecurity and access control. Um, I talked about this earlier in the course and I told you it's gonna be a reoccurring theme. Well, if we think about it, if we think about unauthorized access, this gets back to confidentiality and availability. It needs to be available and secure to only those that should have access to it. And then also preventing unapproved modification of data that gets back to integrity in our CIA triad. And then lastly, of course, this one is pretty straightforward, um, preventing a lack of data confidentiality. So again, all three of these concepts, they relate back to the CIA triad. So always remember the CIA, CIA triad whenever we go through anything in this course, because like I said, everything relates back to it. So we're going to be talking about several different specific categories and types of access control. So these are very important for you to understand because everything that we do with controlling access to our people, our processes, and our technology, they all relate back to this. So we have preventative access controls. We have detective access controls. We have corrective access controls. We have recovery access controls. We have deterrent access controls, and we have compensating access controls. So let's talk about each one in detail. So just like its name implies, preventative access controls prevent actions before they occur. And it's super simple. So let's think about a very simple one. Um, let's say that you own a house and you want to rent it out to tenants as an investor yourself. Well, you want to make sure that the tenants are qualified. So you would perform a background check on them first to make sure that they have been good tenants in the past, that they haven't gone past due on previous rent, that they have a good credit and so forth. So again, you want to prevent from having bad tenants in your house in the first place before they even get into your house. Um, another one would be performing drug tests for new employees. So as a part of the pre-employment process, when you're doing the background checks and everything else, you do a drug test to ensure that the employees aren't using illegal drugs because you don't want to hire somebody that's using illegal drugs because you see that as a possible threat to your business. So two simple examples of preventative controls. So detective controls, again, just like the name implies, so these are detective in nature. Uh, these send out alerts during or after an attack. So a very simple example would be an, a building alarm, whether it's silent or it's not silent, going off during a break-in. Maybe, maybe it has you know a big bell and it goes off to not only be detective, but also to deter people from doing further harm to your business or maybe it's a silent alarm that triggers a phone call to the police or it's linked to the police and the police are notified. Um, from an IT perspective, a network intrusion detection system would alert the network administrators and the cybersecurity professionals of an attack going on on the network right when it identifies it. The next one we wanna talk about is corrective controls. So again, you'll notice that the names pretty much imply what they do. Um, these correct a damaged system or process after something has taken place, some sort of a threat has happened. So 
let's do some simple examples. We'll assume that we're at home, we're on our desktop, we browse the internet, we click on a link, and somehow that downloads malware onto our system. And our antivirus is doing a live scan on everything we do on the internet. It sees that there's malware, it identifies it as malware, and it quarantines it, and then it also deletes the malware, and it fixes your computer. Maybe it rolls back your computer to a previous state, or it changes anything that the malware did on your system back to how it previously was. Um, another example would be on a network. So we talked about intrusion detection systems. There are also network intrusion prevention systems where not only will they identify the attack, but they'll also modify network security settings to stop the attack while it's taking place. So that's corrective access controls. Recovery controls, again, just like the name implies, these are needed and put in place to restore functionality if some sort of a cybersecurity attack or a natural disaster attack or a natural disaster event or even maybe a employee mistake causes harm to your company, organization, or data, or technology. So let's assume, let's go with the example, let's do a natural disaster. Let's say that your main building site had a fire in the server room and a Halon system went out and for some reason it ruined one of your servers and it ruined one of the hard drives. Well, we would have data backups in place where we can back up that corrupted data on that hard drive to get that data restored. Um, another example would be, let's say that your main office building is in an area where there's heavy flooding and it's flooded. And to restore businesses functionalities, you have to set up a secondary site. So you have a secondary site set up where you can restore your business functionality. So that would be recovery controls. A deterrent control is just like it says. It deters something. It, it's almost the same thing as preventative, but it's a bit different. Um, preventative is to prevent it from occurring entirely. Deterring is to try to deter people from going on with the act. But however, we don't know if it's going to work or if it's not going to work. Um, good examples would be security dogs, um, security guards, um, a simple beware of dog sign. I have that at my house. Um, I have read online that it's actually, in terms of theft in homes, that a beware of dog sign is one of the most effective methodologies because um, for two reasons. The thieves, number one, they don't want to get bit by a dog. And number two, the dogs will bark and they'll alert everybody to potentially something going on. Um, a third example would be a fence around your business. So it would deter people because they have to climb over the fence. And if it's a barbed wire fence, it would deter them even more. But if they're really determined to try to break into your business, they're still going to try to break in regardless if you have security dogs or security guards or wear a dog sign or a fence. So this is why this is called deterrent, but it's not 100% preventative in nature. The next one we want to talk about is compensating access controls. So compensating access controls are just like the name implies. Um, we compensate other access controls with multiple layers of access controls to compensate for the weakness of one or over the other. So for example, in our previous example, we will have a beware of dog sign and maybe we'll have security dogs as well because there's going to be an inherent weakness in just the sign itself. Maybe you just put the sign out there and it'll deter some people. However, it won't deter others. So when we talk about compensating controls, we talk about defense in depth. So we talked about layers of defense and we talked about this early on in the course. So this is really about defense in depth and putting multiple layers in place. Um, and with the more layers that you have, the more secure you're going to be. Now, in addition to those categories that we talked about, there are two overarching types of access control that all these different categories can fall into. So the preventative, the detective, the corrective, the recovery, the deterrent and compensating, um, they are either a, going to be a physical control or a logical control. So what's the difference? What is a physical control and what is a logical control? So let's start with physical security. Physical security controls are going to include implementing different access control methods with 
technology that you can touch. And the key word there is touch. And let me highlight this. So when we talk about touching, we're actually talking about securing down the physical technology or your physical building. So physically locking down your equipment and securing your, bus your business or your building. So that's the physical aspect of it. Um, and we talked about a lot of physical security controls already, but we'll talk about them a bit more in the next slide. So that's the physical aspect, aspect of it. Now on the flip side, we have the logical aspect. So logical security methods include elements that are implemented through technological means. So what the heck do I mean by technological means? Um, well, for example, password policies and a logical access control list. So what the heck is a logical access control list? So that would be an access control list on a server that states who, get a who gets access to a network resource or a network file or who can log in or who can't log in. These are actual control lists that are implemented within the software that states that somebody gets access or they don't get access and it states what type of access they get or what type of access they don't get. So when we're talking about logical, logical means, we're talking about in the software, we're talking about the coding itself, we're talking about the programming, and we're talking about the features and the functionality of our network security devices. We're not actually talking about locking the computer down with a cable. We're talking about you logging in and we're talking about the password policies or similar, similar types of logical control methodologies. So that's the difference between physical and logical. Now let's talk about some common ones. So what are some common physical access controls? Uh, we've already talked about a lot of these in the course, but I think it holds merit to discuss them again here, and we're actually going to talk about them more in the next lecture. So common physical access controls, employee ID badges. This makes complete sense, right? You're going to want to have ID badges, not only for your employees, but for guests as well, contractors and everybody else. A physical access log. So when everybody, anybody ever needs to enter your building, you have them sign in if they're a contractor or if they're a guest or if they're visiting from another office. Um, door access systems, so access systems to get, gain access to certain areas of the organization. Proximity cards, so a proximity card would be what you would use to get access to the door access systems where you swipe it. And if you have access, you get in. If you don't have access, you don't get in. Uh, man traps, so a man trap is a way of securing high security areas where there's two doors, you go in one door and you can't open the other door until the other door, the first door is closed. And you have to use your ID badge to get into both. And so if you go into one door and they determine that you shouldn't have access to the second door, you're locked in there. So you're trapped. And that's a good way to keep people out of areas that shouldn't be in areas that they don't have access to. Um, hardware locks, pretty basic and straightforward. Video surveillance, again, um, preventative potentially or deterrent one of those two different measures, security guards, building alarms, fences, and so forth. Now let's talk about common logical access control methodologies. So access control list, we talked about that. Um, actually determining who has access to what and who doesn't and what type of access they do or don't have. Windows group policies are a way of implementing these across uh, domains. So domains are way, ways that we not only control how people authenticate, but also we manage access to technological assets. So we can set up group policies over our window domain systems. We can set up password policies like we talked about previous in the course. We can also set up account policies. So we can set up all sorts of different policies surrounding actual user accounts. And then we can also set up device policies as well in terms of controlling what type of devices get access and when and how and so forth. So that's common logical access control methodologies. Now, in the next lecture, I'm going to talk a bit more about physical and logical access controls. Um, but however, that's going to conclude this lecture. I know we talked about a lot in this lecture. So if you do have any questions, number one, I recommend just going through the lecture again. And if you still have questions, then let me know. Um, and if not, thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the next video.
Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.